So now we're going to work our way through the camera notes, and you can see here the key functions one diagram, which matches the position that the camera is in on your screens. So I'm going to go through the numbered buttons and explain what each do. Number one is the front tally light. You can see it located on your notes. What is it? It's an indicator lamp for recording and warning. When the battery or remaining space on the card is low, this lamp will blink. However, its primary purpose is to let your subject know when you are recording them. So we're talking about this white light here. Basically, as soon as I go into record mode by pressing one of my three record buttons, this light will flash red and will then stay solid red to let us know that we are in record mode. There's a similar tally light on the back of the camera. This is located here. It's a little red light on the back of the camera. This is to stop somebody approaching your camera person when they're in the middle of recording something so as not to distract them. As soon as I press the record button to end the record, this will flash red and go off. And similarly, the one at the front will have flashed red and gone off. A lot of the stuff we see in the notes here are already done because the camera has been assembled. So number two, the viewfinder cable clamp is the cable here that has been connected into the clamp. Number three is on the front of the camera under the lens. And I know it's difficult to see in the lighting situation here, but it's called the zebra button. The idea of the zebra button is that when the zebra is turned on, it indicates on the viewfinder and in the uh, LCD screen that we see here, by moving the viewfinder or by moving the uh, zebra button, you can basically see if there's an issue in terms of contrast. I'm not sure how clearly you can see this on your screens, but I'm getting zebra lines on the green curtain here. What the camera is telling me is that the contrast between the darkness of this half of the shot and the lightness of this half of the shot is creating a slight problem, whereby when I record, we may see light moving over the fabric surface. We've all seen people in an audience, in a, say a Late Late Show audience, and when the camera goes on them, it's like light is swirling because they're wearing a checkered jacket or a multi-patterned jacket. So the zebra is just there to warn you of this. Ideally, you could press a button and it would fix it. It doesn't. It's just saying, if these are extreme and over the top, the contrast is too much, Therefore, what you need to do is change your lighting. I'll be perfectly honest, I very rarely use it. I check it occasionally, but it's not something to overly concern yourself with. As you can see in your notes, it basically displays the luminance levels of the video image on the viewfinder. Button number four is the auto white balance switch, which we've already discussed, working in conjunction with the main white balance switch where we will get onto. Button number five is a lens lock. The lens has already been locked for you, so we don't go at that. And button number six is the audio monitor selection switch. Now we've looked at two of the buttons up here already. So we're talking about the four buttons along the top up here. So the monitor select switch has a selection of either channel one, channel two, or both. We've discussed splitting soundtracks. We will not be splitting soundtracks. If you were splitting soundtracks, you could move it to channel one, go into camera media mode, play back your clip and listen only to the sound as it was recorded on channel one. You could then cancel it, move to channel two, play the same clip and listen to the sound that was recorded on channel two. Because we won't be splitting tracks, we always leave set this set in the both position. The display button, number seven on page two of your notes, you press and hold the display button for two seconds to switch the display between the LCD monitor and the viewfinder screens. So in other words, if I come back out of media mode and back into camera mode, you saw the effect earlier. You get a graphic display that shows you your sound levels, your time code, your card status and your power status. Press it again and you're back into camera mode. Camera or button eight we've already discussed. This is the cam media button. In camera mode, we're blue. In media mode, we're green. And when we're in green, we're seeing what we've recorded onto our card. And the final switch up here is the full auto shooting, FAS switch. This returns everything to factory settings. You only use this when you are stuck for time. Like I said, you're reporting outside somewhere. You don't have time to do proper white balances or anything. So if you flick this on, everything is returned to factory settings. So you get a good quality, but common denominator, low quality, color quality, light quality, etc., etc. You'll notice the lettering FAS pops up here when we do that full auto shooting.
That's with this graphic display that we see superimposed here, and we'll talk more about that as we work through the lectures, how to remove any graphic displays on your screen. For now, I'm going to turn this off. We've mentioned already the single ear monitor speaker. This is number 10 on this page. We recommend you plug it out, plug your own headphones in. When you're done, please make sure to push this back into position so no dirt or grit gets in there. We've also looked at number 11, which is the shoe, which is where we lock in our uh, radio microphone. Uh, number 12 is simply a microphone lock holder to hold the condenser in place. Number 13 is the microphone holder and 14 is the microphone itself. So now we look at key functions number 2, which you will find on page 3 of your notes. And we're looking at buttons 15 to 26. Again, some of these we've looked at already. 15 is your back tally lamp. This is the lamp that lets the crew know if you are recording so they don't distract you while you are recording. 16 below it is where we plug in our own headphones or we work off this single monitor headphone here. 17 is the lens connector. So basically our lens is already mounted, the cabling here connects it into the body of the camera. So that has been done for you. 18 we have discussed, it's the input 1 and input 2 terminals. Remember we will not use input 2, we will only use input 1. 19 is a simple microphone clamp holder. And 20 then is the channel 2 input select, or uh, channel 2 audio input terminal selection, which allows you to choose between whether you want to select the audio input terminal to record channel 2 or not. We will never be plugging anything in here, so the channel 2 input should always be set to the input 1 setting. 21 refers to these two buttons here, the audio input select signal selection switch, one for, channel, uh, for input 1, one for input 2. Again, with nothing plugged into input 2, we don't need to worry about this, but in relation to input 1, always leave this set to mic plus 48 volts in order to guarantee that you are getting your sound. 22 is the viewfinder connector. You can see the viewfinder here has been plugged in and that's been done for you. 23 is an accessory mounting screw. We don't have these accessories, but bottom line, screw holes here and here, which enable you to screw in a little mini light, so you could basically have direct light on a little uh, LED light to illuminate your subject, or you can add extra microphones, etc, etc, but these are just little balancing screw holes, which, to be honest, we don't use. 24, however, is quite an interesting button. So it's located up here, just behind the little shoe, and it has Focus Assist written on it. It also has a corresponding sister button, on the side of the camera here, focus assist. What happens with focus assist? So as I say, we have a focus assist here. We also have a focus assist up on the top where my tip of my finger is just pointing here. If you look at your LCD monitor, when you press focus assist, the screen turns black and white. However, you'll notice one tone of color in the screen, or hopefully you will, and that is the same blue bottle blue that you see on the wheel here. Focus Assist is there to ensure that you get what you want in focus. On the front of our lens here, you will see a large rubber ring, and this is your focus ring. So basically, by moving this left or right, you adjust the focus on whatever shot you are lining up. By adjusting this, you can ensure that what you want to be in focus is in focus when the Focus Assist is on. In other words, anything that is tinted blue, the same color as the wheel here, is sharply in focus. Anything that isn't is not focused as center of the shot. So if we have a subject here doing a piece to camera with activity going on in the background, you'll need to put on focus assist, adjust the focus ring to ensure that the person doing the piece to camera is sharply in focus, whereas what goes on in the background is slightly more blur. Finally on page 3, we have buttons 25 and 26. We've already looked at 26, it's the record button option for when you're doing handheld camera work. But because you might just be carrying the camera like so, very often people can accidentally press this record button. So button 25, slightly hidden from view here, is where this white line goes to a side switch that enables you to lock this button so it doesn't work. So if this button isn't working for you, it's because somebody has locked it with the little switch down here.